Welcome to Not Just a Transaction, the podcast series hosted by experienced real estate authorities, Nick Prefontaine and Zachary Beach. Each week, the hosts bring you expert guests to help you navigate the many creative options available for buying or selling a home while cutting out the costly hurdles of a conventional real estate deal. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Not Just a Transaction Podcast. This is going to be a fantastic, superb, extraordinary podcast because I, your co-host, Zachary Beach and Nick Prefontaine are here and we're ready to dive in to another fantastic episode. Why don't you say hi to the people, Nick? That's the, hello people. That's the only, that's the only thing that matters is that we're both here. That's why it's going to be an amazing episode and that's why everyone should be tuning in. Well, Nick, I appreciate the ego statement, but it's all about you the buyers and the sellers out there. But most importantly, today, it's about you, the buyers. Nick and I are going to dive into some misconceptions surrounding your down payment. Nick, over to you. So this is this has been a, um, a topic that has come up with a lot of our buyers over the years and um, more particularly just recently. And that's, so wait a minute. I have to do an initial down payment with you guys anywhere from three to 10% and then add to my down payment, add to my deposit over the course of my lease. Once I'm going through the loan process and getting my own loan, I'm going to have to come up with another down payment then? Is that what you're telling me? No, that's not what we're saying. Nope. (laughs) Nope, absolutely not. So- in most cases, probably I would handicap it at nine, nine out of 10 times. The fact is that our buyers are finding that they do not have to come up with an additional down payment. There's a few reasons for that. So as we, as I already mentioned, you're putting your initial down payment down anywhere from three to 10%. And then we're working a plan with you over the course of your agreement, over the course of your lease, that's going to add to that and get it up to, if not over 10% in many cases. That's going to give you the best chance of getting your loan, of course, and going forward and closing on the property. And it's going to also kind of lessen the chances of you having to come up with an additional down payment. There are, there are certain scenarios and it does happen from time to time where for a particular loan product at that time, which is something that we can't forecast. So we can't look into our crystal ball and and see what programs are going to be available to or even three years from now when you do go and get your loan. However, what we can do is put you as the buyer in the best position to get your loan. And we're finding that because we're having our buyers get to that 10% or even more over the course of their lease, that the lender in most cases is not requiring an additional down payment for them. Now there have been over the past few handful of years, there there have been situations where a buyer does need to come up with a, a little bit more down. And those are very, very select scenarios. Probably I would say one out of 10 or even one or two out of 10 where the particular property, the subject property is in an area where Um, It's in a flood zone and there are so many variables at play uh, where the buyer actually did have to come up with a little bit down payment. But the short answer is no, you will not have to come up with an additional down payment once you get to the end of your agreement. Now, the second misperception that, that I see or that we see is that people say in my area, I see home people getting loans now for only 3% down or only three and a half percent down. Why can't I just move into the house for first and last month's rent and then pay the 3% at the end of my lease when it's time for me to get my own loan? 
Ooh, good question. <laughs> Thank you. That it the reason the reason that we don't do that is that unfortunately that's not that's just not how our program works and that's not that would not be setting you up for success so as i mentioned you're putting our buyers are putting that initial down payment and then they're adding to it over the course of their agreements so the lender is going to look at the look at the log look at the case study and see that look at your history rather not case study because you're not a case study if you're getting a loan anyway sure. Uh, the lender is going to see all the rents received and all the deposits received and look at it and look at it as a no brainer and just say, oh my gosh, why wouldn't I give this person a loan? They put an initial down payment, then they add it to their down payment over the course of their agreement. This is a no brainer. And all the deals that we do, we want to make it just like that. We want to have it be a no brainer for them to be able to approve you for your loan. Uh, we never want there to be any question. And that's, that's why we have the systems and processes that allow you as the buyer to be successful. And in turn, sellers out there, you know that we are committed to the buyers. So you in turn will be successful as well. Third misperception that we see is I've seen other rent-to-own programs out there where your monthly rent, the, the um, amount that you're paying every month is going towards a down payment. Why don't you guys do that? That'd be, that'd be so much easier. I wouldn't have to come up with a down payment. I wouldn't have to come up with additional over the course of my agreement. Why don't you just do that? There's a few reasons for that. And Really, it's just people that do that, investors that do that, do not have a track record of getting their buyers to the finish line, meaning they never actually complete the deal, or it's very few and far between we've seen, they complete the deal and the buyer gets their own loan. Uh, there's several reasons for that. When you're doing every month, when you're making that rent payment, then there are so many variables that come into play. Well, what's market rents in the area at that time? Well, we can only, and this is directly from a lender that we've worked with. This isn't, this isn't me making this up. This, the lender looks at it and says, all right, well, we can only use X percentage if it's in this particular area. And I have to look at the map and see, there are so many variables that come into play when you're when you're doing that and really it's not setting you up for success so by putting an initial down payment and then additional payments towards that deposit over the course of your agreement you're giving yourself the best chance of being successful when it comes to the end of your agreement and oftentimes our buyers are able to get a loan on the property before the end of their agreement i mean within the past year we've had We've had a more than more than a few get their loan af, after uh, gosh, I would say thirteen to fifteen months, and doing doing it the way that I'm talking about. Whether it's uh, why can't I just do no down payment and then do it at the end? That's just not how our program works. Or having the monthly payment go towards my down payment. That's just not getting you to the finish line. That's just not setting you up for success. And that's what we're all about here is setting you up for success in getting your own loan. The guys have a, a couple additional uh, comments here, just in case somebody hasn't listened to our podcast before. Uh, we have gone over episodes with down payment uh, in the past as well, as this is always a hot topic. Um, the down payment comes directly off of your purchase price. You're building in equity into your home when you go get your own loan. That's why banks are qualifying people, our rent-to-own buyers, uh, at such a high rate. It's because the bank knows they're only supplying a loan for less than, it's typically the 90 to 10% rule. Uh, and some of the buyers actually put down up to 20%. So now they only have to go qualify for 80%. That's why they can go qualify for these loans and get into these homes. So Every single dollar that you put in as a down payment is, is your equity because we've locked in a price with you. That price is not changing. 
Um, the other thing too, as you mentioned, why can't I just rent this thing and then buy it at the end? Like just put first and last month's rent. We're not landlords. Um, we provide a rent to own program and the rent to own program does require a down payment. Um, cause that route would mean that we're just being your landlord for the next 24 months until you decide to put down down payment. Um, that's, what's going to be a, a diff differentiation. Is that a real word? Differentiation? I think it is. Yeah, you were okay. Yeah, look it up. Um, cool. Words. Um, so that that's rather important. Words. Because when you go into the rent-to-own program, you have the ability to purchase the property uh, at a specific price that you locked in today. That's why a lot of our buyers uh, are now walking into large amounts of equity, and we're 100% okay with that because of the way the market has been going, versus you rent this for the next 24 months, and then we'll decide on that price. So how do you know how much to save? You don't because you don't know what the price is going to be in the next 24 months. So yeah, exactly. Systematic. Systems and processes. Exactly. And that's uh, a few things you brought up there. The, the market, the market's appreciating right now. And it has been for the, for the last little while. I, it would be really to the buyer's disadvantage to say, okay, well, I'm just going to rent it. And then I'll worry about doing the down payment at the end of my agreement. Well, the market's going up. So lock in your price now, put that down payment down. That's going to give you the best chance of being successful. Love it. Because it's not just a transaction to us. Nick, what another awesome episode. Thank you for bringing up those misconceptions. I hope that buyers that are listening to this are now much more clear. Clarity is now a part of their lives. Uh, we're excited about that. Everybody, hope you enjoyed another episode of Not Just Transaction Podcast, your buyers and sellers podcast, because it was extraordinary. It was superb, and it was a heck of a lot of fun, and I hope it was informative. Um, if you're listening to this on whatever device you're listening to, please make sure you go ahead and rate and review this podcast on Apple, iTunes, Spotify, Banana. probably 30 other ones at this point in time as well that you may be listening to. We should go ahead and rate and review, and we would love your feedback. That way we can bring some additional value to you on each one of your days that you listen to this podcast. Have a fantastic Wednesday, and we will see you next week. Thanks for listening to another episode of Not Just a Transaction. If you want to learn more on selling a home, buying a home, or resources to learn more, head on over to our website at originalre.com.